Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, I had something pointed out to me uh, by the commenter Redox.m6867, and it's something that I was kind of aware of al already, um, but I just, you know, I decided it's it's not really something I should have done, um, but it, it turns out it works. What I did works, but I found a better way to uh, to do this integral without having to rely on kind of just, you know, wishy-washy methods. Um, first, I'm going to show what I did in my original solution to this. I let f of t, I made the reparameterization that f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t over 1 minus x dx. And that is, uh, that's pretty wrong to do. It turns out that um, you can get the correct solution by... Um, letting f of t equal this, and then setting i equal to f prime at zero. Um, but you really should not be applying the, Le the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to that integral because it doesn't converge for, uh, for, those, for um, any values of t. Um, so here's the correct reparameterization. Here's, here's how we're going to do it for real f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the t over 1 minus x dx. And uh, that does converge um, for uh, definitely for t values greater than negative 1. Um, I verified that with Desmos and Wolfram Alpha, and that, that integral definitely converges. So we can use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. Um, as long as we replace the restriction that t is greater than negative 1. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So our i is going to be equal to, um, I'm not going to perform the differentiation. Uh, you guys should be pretty good with that already. Well, yeah, I will. So f prime of t is going to be equal to negative integral 0 to 1 of x to the t natural log x over 1 minus x dx. And then we can see that our original integral is going to be f prime evaluated at, well, negative f prime evaluated at 0. So negative f prime evaluated at 0. So yeah, that's a much better reparameterization since the, uh, the other one, the other reparameterization I made, uh, it gives you an integral that doesn't converge for any values of t, whereas this one does. So much better. Okay. So now what do we do? Um, let's convert our f of t into a sum, just like in the last solution that I had. All right, so I'm gonna kinda go fast. So our, um, sorry, that's terrible. Uh, f of t is going to be equal to, um, let's see, that's going to be the, uh, the integral from zero to one of the sum from n going from 0 to infinity of x to the n dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum n going from 0 to infinity of uh, x to the n plus t dx. And as you can see, there's not any issue with switching the, uh, we can integrate this entire thing uh, term by term from 0 to 1 with respect to x, no problem. Um, so this one actually just becomes the sum from n going from 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus t plus 1. And likewise, this one will just become the sum from n going from 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1. So that's, that's our f of t. All right, um, we can combine these into one sum. So f of t, let me see if I can do this uh, fairly quickly. Um, that's our common denominator is going to be n plus 1 times n plus 1. 
plus t plus 1. And here we'll have an n plus t plus 1. And then we'll have a minus n minus 1. So we'll just get a t, right? n plus t plus 1 minus n minus 1. We'll just be left with a t. All right, so that's valid. That's our f of t. Let's increase our index on n by 1 and subtract 1 from all the n's inside the sum. So have n, come on. And then n plus t. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, it can be shown that, that this converges for, uh, oh, let's see. Um, I don't believe there are any values of t that that thing would not converge for. Um, let me think. What about negative values? Um, and minus 1 over minus 1. No, I don't. I don't think that would be an issue, um, but it doesn't matter. We're, we're only concerned with t's greater than negative 1, and it definitely converges um, for those values of t. So let's go ahead and take a derivative. All right, that means our f prime of t expressed as a sum is going to be equal to the sum. n goes from 0 to infinity. Um, Let's see, we're taking derivative with respect to t, so we'll pull out this constant 1 over n, and then we'll have a quotient rule. We'll get low n plus t, d high, which is just 1, and then minus t times 1, okay, just minus t over uh, n plus t all squared. Let's see, that cancels out, that, and that cancels out, so we're just left with f prime of t is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over, uh, sorry, that's n goes from 1 to infinity. This is 1, not 0, of uh, n plus t all squared. Okay. So our now that we have f prime of t, we simply plug in 0 and we have our answer. So this is equal to negative sum n goes from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over n squared. And this is the Basel problem. And it evaluates the pi squared over 2. So our entire integral is negative pi squared over 2. All right. Um, I'm sorry, not pi over 2, 6 pi squared over six. All right, guys, uh, I thought that was a little bit, uh, a little bit better than my previous video. I will leave my previous video up until I have a chance to uh, take it down and put up the corrected one. But for now, uh, I hope that'll do it for you. Hope you enjoyed that.